Hello and welcome back to the virtual classroom for Comp 3077 Online. This will be your second video of week one and your second video for the full semester, in fact. And you should be watching these in sequence. I'm hoping you reviewed the course introduction video, which covered all the ins and outs of the course, gave you a good idea of what's due and when it's due and what's happening here. So you already know that in week one, you will have to submit a SAM case. You have a quiz on FOL on Fanshawe Online. That's the only week when you have to do a quiz on Fanshawe Online. All the other quizzes are on SAM. They start in week two. In week one on SAM, you just have the SAM case. But you will need to set up your SAM account. And if you don't have the money to pay the 100 bucks approximately for the key code yet, no big deal. You can set up the account for free and start working right away. So this is a required video. A few notes on the SAM setup here. Uh, it is free for the first two weeks, as I just mentioned. And if you already have a key code, you can put the key code in. If you bought the key code at the bookstore or online, you can put it in right away as you're setting up your account. Otherwise, you can put it in later. After two weeks go by, your account will still be active and you'll still be in the section you joined. However, you won't be able to get back in until you activate it with the paid key code. Do not set up another account. This drives professors crazy. You guys set up accounts, you get into all these sections. It creates problems with the publishers. You, you create one SAM account and you get into the section and that's the account where you're gonna get marks counted. If you start adding more accounts, you're gonna end up being banned from SAM. It's a big problem in this course. So you, you make one SAM account. If you had a SAM account from taking this course previously, and maybe things didn't go so well, maybe you got busy and you didn't finish it, and now you're taking it again, do not reuse the old SAM account. If you go to set up your account and it says there's already an email associated with that account, that email is associated with, an, just use another email. In fact, you can actually make one up. Um, I'm not gonna recommend that you do that unless you have to, but I'll show you what to do in that case too. But you need a brand new SAM account. And another quick note, if you bought SAM, for a previous version of this course. We have now upgraded to the next version of Microsoft Office. It's a different product, it's a different ISBN. You do have to buy SAM again. I'm very sorry about that. There's nothing we can do about that. And now the new version of SAM only lasts two semesters. Most of you will get through this course first time around, no big deal, you'll be good to go. Uh, so the SAM website, let's get to there. And there's all kinds of places in FOL content where I'm talking about SAM. I'm sending you the link to SAM. I'm showing you, well, you can buy it here. Okay, if you, let's talk about buying it first, then we'll get to the website. The website is simply sam.sengage.com. And then you end up right here. No triple W, just sam.sengage.com. It's linked to a bunch of different places in FOL. I don't have it right on the course homepage like the YouTube playlist because the, the domain is a lot simpler, the web address, but you'll you'll have it in your favor. You'll have it in there once you go to it a couple times. So that's where you go. Uh, if you want to buy it right away and set your account up with the key code right now, you can do that from one of the many places where I have the link posted and you can buy it right from the publisher's website. Otherwise, you can buy it from the bookstore. You can look it up on the bookstore website and buy it there or go to the bookstore, which I would love if you did because... You know, it's good to support the bookstore. If you do buy it at the bookstore, another quick note that I didn't put in our in our slide deck there, but it's something that's in the beginning of the required resources section. If you buy it at the bookstore, and this is for mainly for the face-to-face -face students who are on campus, you will get a receipt with a redemption code on it that is not actually your SAM key code. And you have to go to this website. It's described right here in the required learning resources section in the getting started module for FOL. You will put the redemption code in, your email address, and then you put that in, you hit redeem product, you click I agree and hit redeem product, and then it gives you your SAM code. Most of you in the online section will not be doing it that way. You won't have gone to the bookstore or gone to their website. You'll probably just end up getting it here, in which case you don't check this other box. You check the first one here. It's, it's gonna go to that link automatically with that box checked and it will give you the full, eight, I think it's 18 digits or something near that. It will give you the full code. So that's how you get the code. But to be very clear, you don't have to buy it right away. It says right here, you can set up your SAM account for free. Important note, you might have to buy it again if you already took it. So go to this, uh, here's a help page to go to it. Here's the institution key for where you go. 
Okay, and this is obviously all based on the link up here to go to samsengage.com, right? Which I've now gone to two times. Um, that's auto-completing my instructor account. We don't need that. And you may have an old account auto-complete there too. Do not use the old account. Just start a brand new fresh account. If you happen to have taken this before fall 2022, most of that, most of you, that won't even matter. It's not going to be applicable. You could be watching this video a year later and then you just you go here, go to this website, click on new user and you set up your account. So the first thing it asks for is an institution key. This is, you can see, it's already, already trying to auto-complete. This is a common key that everyone at Fanshawe is going to use. I have this here. Uh, it's right down here. It's also on the course homepage. It's built right into one of the content items in the getting started section. It's in the week one section. It's in another place in the week one section. It's in like seven different places in FOL. And I will still get a bunch of emails with students asking me, what's the institution key? <laughs> well, it's there. I just copy and pasted it. T2147186. And when you hit submit, it will identify you as a Fanshawe College student. You click OK. And you set this up just like you're setting up an account to buy something on a website. It's no big deal. You type in your name. Okay, I'm just making up a different name because I keep making up accounts to do this. So here... I would recommend using your Fanshawe Online email. I keep talking about how I don't want old accounts reused. Most of you have probably never used SAM before, so you shouldn't have an issue with that. However, if you've used another Cengage product, when you go to create account, it may associate that email with another account. And at that point, if you remember the password and it wasn't another SAM account, if it's just for another Cengage product, you can connect the two. I still wouldn't rehash an old SAM account from the 2016 version. But if it's an account for another Cengage product and it tries to connect and you actually know the password, you could do that, that would be fine. Um, but if it connects it to some old SAM account, I would not reuse that, I would just use another email. In fact, you can actually make up an email as long as the communication email is correct, you won't have any issues getting your credentials. But what, however you set this up, you should write it down as you're doing it. I've done this so many times, I don't have any emails left, so I am gonna, I am gonna make up an email, okay? And just literally, just make up an email. Now, I'm not telling you to do that. I'm telling you to actually make an email that you're familiar with because you wanna be able to sit down and log into this every week, all right? So whatever you set up here, whichever email address you use, you would copy down and you would copy down the password as well. Notice that there's some requirements here for the password, so just, Follow along with those. Okay, and I'm remembering my password. I'm typing it in again. I do not need to join the mailing list. I'm gonna put a communication email that I know will work for sure, which I can just use my Fanshawe Online email. And even though that is associated with other accounts, the username email isn't. So that's fine. Birth year. I'll give you my actual birth year. You guys get to know how old I am. And it wouldn't matter. You just have to be 18. I have read. Create account. So at this point, you would want to save your username and password. When you click create account, assuming you haven't used something that's already in use, it will right away tell you, hey, your account's been created. Go log into Sam. So if when you hit create account, it got to another screen that said there's already an account in use and you know it's for a previous Sam account, I would just go back and use a different email. And you can still use the same communication email, but a different email. But if it's associated with another Cengage product, like I know a lot of people took the typing course, you can connect it if you want to. Bottom line, you need to set up an account in SAM that's new, not something that's been in SAM before. Click OK. I go here. What did I do? My case Sloan man. At email.com. As soon as you log in, everything is going to be the same as what it is for me. First thing it's going to do is say, hey, you buy your key code yet? Please put in your 18-digit key code. Now, as I told you, you can use SAM for free for the first two weeks. You have 14 days until your grace period expires. So I don't have it yet. I don't have the money yet. No problem. I can still do my first two weeks of assignment. I'm going to enter later. So as you keep going back to SAM and logging in, it will keep asking you for that until you enter it. And if 14 days passes, it just won't let you pass that point until you do enter it. At that point, you do not make another account. 
It drives us crazy. Please stop doing that. Uh, the the court the section will already have locked you out by the time you get into the two week period. So, speaking of sections, that's the first thing you do once you create your new SAM account is click here to join a section. So, ideally, you would find your instructor's last name and somewhere, very likely on the course homepage, or they've sent you an email indicating what the section is. Um, you will find the section name. This says to be announced by a professor because I didn't want to put my section's name in for this semester and then have people watching the video thinking they have to find that specific section. Keep in mind, these videos are common for all of the sections, including the face-to-face -face students. Anybody that misses a class and needs to watch a video, including the first week, which a lot of people miss, they're watching this to set up their SAM account, your professor will have given you your section name. So I'm going to randomly pick a section and join it. I'm actually going to pick the section that I've set up this semester. This is not necessarily your section. I want to make that very clear. Okay, as soon as you join a section, you will never have to go and do that again. Now you can go up here, click activities, and every time you log in, it won't take... The calendar in SAM is irrelevant. Don't ever log into SAM and see no due dates and then start telling your professor, oh, I thought nothing was due in SAM. It is made crystal clear in your FOL calendar, everywhere in FOL. As I went over in the course introduction, there's three different places that just provide the straight up list, the evaluation quick list. Your, your work is due Sunday night at 11.59 p.m. unless otherwise notified by your professor. The reason I don't use the calendar in SAM and I don't like making the assignments go away after they're due is because then students who had a late start or students who missed one or two that wanna do them before the test to prepare for the test, would not be able to access those assignments. And that's not okay with me. So you will ignore the calendar all the time and you will simply go to your activity list. And if you scroll down, you'll see we're starting in week one right now. We just have the case. Once you submit the case two times, you get to download the file, do some stuff to it, and then submit it. If you don't get 100%, you get to submit it again. Uh, it does disappear from your evaluation list, but you would be able to see the file you submitted under reports, which I just joined the section, so I don't have anything in there yet. So just to give you a bit of a crash course on this, we're gonna do this again in the week one lecture video. You click on the case, tells you you can submit it again. If you don't get 100%, you click start, and you have an instruction file and an Excel case file. You may see uh, cases later, you will, later in the semester that have more than one start. You have a start file plus some support files. And you just, first thing you do is download the instructions, do what the instructions say, get the file, do the stuff that the instructions say to do to the file, and then you save it at the end and upload it right here, it's assuming you've named it correctly, because the beginning of every instruction and if you haven't identified, notice how mine gives me the option of where to save it. Most people, if they haven't changed the settings in their browser, it just puts it into downloads. It's almost always in downloads. So then you can show it in the folder from there, or you can, oop, I just closed the whole browser. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, let's go back and get that open again. Okay, there we are. Um, quick tip, if you close a browser with multiple tabs, it should be in your history. That's what I closed. So I got it right back there. So there are instructions at the beginning that I downloaded there. Once you download them, mine prompts me where to save it. So I actually stuck it in downloads anyway. It should show up there if you're using Chrome, like I'm recommending, and you can actually open it right up from there. And now the start file in Excel, I wouldn't open right up. I would download it, rename it, and then open it. And the name change is really, really simple. Uh, you just see that one in the file name? All you have to do is change that to a two. And at the beginning of every set of case instructions, it tells you exactly what to do. So I'm not going to do the whole case now. I just was setting up Sam and showing you that. That'll be in the next video. We're going to going to show you the resources for the FOL quiz, and I'm going to show you the entire case. And then every week, I will go in and make a demonstration video where I download the case instructions and the Excel file and do the whole thing. So I'm literally giving you the answers. And the FOL quiz from week one, the answers are in the week one readiness file. And all of the SAM quizzes that start in week two, the answers are all in the training. And there will be a specific video in week two that shows you how to use the quizzes in the training. So 
above where the steps actually start. It shows you every week, you take the file and see where the one is a one and you change it to a two. You don't then have to change it again when you submit for a second time for a better mark. It's always just, you change the one to a two. Keep in mind, and it says it right here, different computers have different settings, like their, their global system settings. Some Macs and PCs will show you the file extension and some will not. So it, it just depends on the settings. So if I go into, let me take this Excel file. I'm gonna put the Excel file on my desktop. I, I have my browser set to actually give me the option to do that. So I'm gonna throw it on the desktop and I'm gonna do this for a reason because I wanna show you if I navigate around in that folder, my Windows settings on my computer do show the extension. Okay, but if I were to, exa for example, look at um, medium icons or something, that still shows. Huh. And these are the settings I get from my computer at Fanshawe College. Um, view list, view details. See, mine is pretty much showing it every way I do it. Um, and that's just the way the settings are on this computer. You could be on your computer at home and you'll see the Excel icon like I see right here, but you won't see the .xlsx. And I'm going to go over this again when we do the week one case. That does not mean it's not there. If it says Microsoft Excel worksheet or workbook, whatever it may be, this is the extensions there. You do not type it in again. What a lot of people do is they don't see the extension. So then they type the number one. I'm going to right click to rename file. And on a Mac, you can do the same thing, command click. All you have to do is change the one to a two, and then the file is ready to open and work on. I realize the instructions say, open it and then save as, but I wanna encourage you guys never to have more than one copy of the file, just have the one. Um, so I got into the beginning of the starting of a case there a little bit for you, but really we're gonna, we're gonna do that in the next video. This. This video is just to get your SAM account set up, get you right into the section and show you that you can start working right away. Uh, next week, you will have a, uh, yeah, go back to activity list there. You don't need to look at the calendar. Again, ignore the calendar. You'll have another case. And next week, we'll start with quizzes. And every quiz has a training module and the answers to the quiz are in the training module if you can't get the mark you need on the quiz. Cases you can submit twice and I will always keep the highest mark. Every professor will. Quizzes, you can do as many times as you want before the deadline, of course. This all has to be done before the weekly deadline, which is Sunday night. Quizzes, all you have to do is get a 70 to get a full pass when the grades transfer to FOL. But you have to get that 70. If you have like a 68, you're not going to get the pass. And the reason I'm pretty picky about that is because I give you the answers in the training. And I really like the quizzes. The quizzes put you into a different environment where it's more like a simulated version of Excel. And you, you try steps one at a time instead of doing a full case. So SAM account's all set up. When you're done, you can log out if you want to. It usually logs you out anyway after an hour. And that's how to set up your SAM account. And again, you can do it for free. Just make sure you get your key code at some point before the end of week two. And if you do, I would like to remind you that you can get extra credit. If you get your key code before the end of week two and you submit proof of purchase, there's a, a picture of the receipt or something like that, I will give you 1% extra credit. All of your professors will. So that's it for this video. It's a little longer than I wanted it to be, but I was trying to cover a lot of little ins and outs of SAM and make sure all the questions would have been covered about how to set up a SAM account. So get that account set up, please, right away. Get your FOL quiz done for week one. Get your SAM case done for week one, and you'll be ready to rock. And don't forget about these little notes right here. Please do not make more than one account. Do not reuse old accounts. And yes, you have to buy it again if you bought it before fall 2022. And now it only lasts two semesters. Sorry about that. But it's a great product. It's a great platform. You get your marks immediately. You never have to wait for marks. Uh, professors will transfer marks from SAM to FOL manually. This takes place once every couple weeks usually. We don't do it right away. So don't be bugging your professors every two seconds. If you see your mark in SAM, which you will as soon as you submit something and you know you did it by the weekly deadline, you're good to go, okay? And it will be an FOL. Thanks, guys. I'll see you in the next video. We're going to do our first case together, and I'll give you a quick crash course on the FOL quiz.